still very much in the experimentation phase of building thinking classrooms for kindergarten. So I'm here today to update you on what's been going on and kind of the biggest challenge I've been having is finding tasks that work for my kiddos. So where did I find them? A lot of the tasks I've been finding have been adapted from the UQ website or the Enrich website. So I will link those down below. Make sure that you check those out as well as my blog post with everything that I'm talking about so that you can reference it later. So how do you present tasks? Presenting tasks, I find, has to be quick like it says in the book, but especially with our youngest kiddos, they really love a good story. So when you can add some kind of storytelling element into your task, they usually have more engagement and buy-in and are willing to work on it longer. I tend to use a lot of like visuals, quick visuals to reinforce some vocabulary or any last things I want them to talk about or want them to think about, especially when working with a partner. I have to say for the most part, they're very, very good at working with partners. There's just a few kiddos who tend to have a bit of trouble engaging and then that causes some friction with their partner because their partner wants to work and they're having a bit of trouble with it. So it's definitely something I'm gonna keep my eye on and work on. Like I mentioned previously, my first, my first task was getting to the right space and sharing the marker and I'm just gonna run through briefly. They were able to get to the right space, sharing the marker they're really good at, but they weren't really actually working together. So from there, the next task that I gave them was to build a tower together. And from there, it was to draw one picture together on your whiteboards, taking turns and kind of creating it and having that discussion about what do you wanna draw? Well, I wanna draw a rainbow. It's like, okay, great, we'll draw a rainbow. And then I want a unicorn, so we're gonna have a unicorn under the rainbow, that kind of thing to really get them discussing what it is that they're doing and then continue working on sharing the marker and listening to your partner, which they they have gotten very good at. It really depends on your goal, what you're wanting, what kind of task you're wanting to use. So if you want them to be thinking outside the box, you might want a non-curricular task, but if you're really just wanting them to discuss what it is that they're doing, you might wanna choose a task that's easier for them to do because then all of the kids can engage the math and we're really just focusing on the discussion. So I think that these two can be done interchangeably, but the first task that I actually did was how many are there? So I gave each group a bag with magnets in it, a certain number of magnets. So they had to first figure out how many were there and second, figure out a way to tell me how many were there on their board. And that worked really well because at least in one of the partners, there was someone who could count to seven or 10 or something like that, which is the highest that that collection of things went for our first task. My next task is called the three princes, which was adapted from an enriched uh, task called three block towers. So in this story, there were three princes, the blue prince, the red prince, and the green prince. And all of them wanted to be first or wanted to be on top of the tower. Went with a lot of fighting and a lot of discussion. Probably wouldn't say fighting, I'd say with a lot of discussion about it. They decided that each of them should have a turn in each position of the tower to make it fair for everybody because they were brothers and they should want to try and make it fair. So for that task, I gave each group a recording sheet as well as three cubes and one of the correct color crayon. And they had to figure out all the different combinations they could make with those colors having the green on top, red on top, blue on top, and so on. And afterwards, if the groups finished early, their next step was, well, what happens if now the yellow princess comes in and she wants a turn at everything? So then they got a yellow cube, a yellow crayon, and then they flipped their paper over and had to figure out how many different ways they might be able to do that. And that was a super successful task. The kids worked on it for at least 25, 30 minutes without me. I was just kind of walking around, seeing what they were doing. They were into it. They were drawing, they were coloring, they were talking about it. It was really, really cool to see. So I definitely highly recommend that task. The next few tasks are from the Building Thinking Classrooms book, but I adapted them a little bit to make them appropriate for my beginning of year kindergartners. So the first one is how many squares. So basically it's a huge table of like 12 squares or something like that, you think, but the kids have to figure out if you can make bigger squares or smaller squares out of the squares that they have. At the beginning, 12 was kind of a stretch for some of my um, kids. So I made the square smaller and just had nine. And then they were more able to kind of play with those numbers and figure out how many squares there were. 
there were some of them got really stuck there's only nine and no more than nine and we really had to talk about like well can you make a bigger square out of smaller squares or smaller squares out of bigger squares to get them kind of thinking outside the box later on it came back to it with the original 12 squares and they kind of remembered what they had done before and were able to figure out that there was more than just the original 12 squares that they had thought of the next task i did was which one is greater so for this task they were comparing seven and eight so the story i gave them was that seven and eight have beef they're upset because seven thinks that he is bigger and eight was like no I'm definitely bigger, I have more, I'm greater. So again, the kids knew, I had very few students who didn't know that eight was bigger than seven already. So this task was more about proving your mathematical thinking and discussing with your partner, well, how are we gonna show that eight is bigger than seven so that they can settle this dispute? And they really, really enjoyed that. They liked the characters. They had a lot of really creative ways to think about those numbers. So that was another really, really great task that had my kids working for a while. This next task that I had my students do is from G. Fletchy and it's the five stages task. So it's basically a growing pattern and then the kids have to figure out, well, what's the next step in the growing pattern if they were to actually build it. So for that task, I really took advantage of using manipulatives with them. So they had access to square tiles if they wanted to, to try and make their pattern bigger. That task was pretty easy to thin slice because I would ask them like, what would stage six look like what about stage seven like what what if you had stage 10 for some of the kids who really really got it and they were actually really starting to figure out like oh you just have to add to the edge or there was a lot of really interesting discussion going on while they were doing that task my next step is really having them work on the skills that they practiced after the main session so really checking your understanding and incorporating the mild, medium, and spicy kind of options for checking their understanding to see kind of how they do with that and see if it helps them really cons consolidate that learning because for the really first task that I was using, it was really like getting in the flow of working together and engaging in mathematics and engaging those discussions. And now especially to their stamina is better. So at the beginning when I tried to have like the group discussions, it was just a lot and the kids were just like done after that. We were like, they were starting to get kind of silly, we weren't actually listening or really focusing on what other kids were doing. So at the beginning, I usually had like one group go to another group and they might ask for help or one group who finished early would go help another group. Kind of that was our wrap up, I would say, so that they were still getting that information and listening to other kids, but in a smaller setting, whole group was a bit too, too much for them. So those are my next steps in building thinking classrooms. If you have any tasks or questions, please leave them down below and I will link my blog post, like I said, with all of the tasks that I mentioned here today. I hope you give some a try and I will see you next time.